Hello and welcome to Hair in the Hawthorne. My name's Kate Rain. As you can see from the grin on my face, even before we started this, the fairy shenanigans have absolutely begun. I know it's going to be one of those podcasts where my cheeks will absolutely ache mm. by the end of it. Wherever this goes, who bloody knows, because it's going to go all kinds of weird and wacky, and I'm loving it already. So I'm going to hand you over to my co-host, Neil, who I'm going to take a breath before before we start, and Neil's going to do his best Top of the Pops impression and introduce who we've got on this evening. Top of the Pops impression. Oh, it's so tempting, but I'm not going to do that. Um, <laughs> just before we came on, um, Kate said uh, we'll do introducing the band. And although our guests tonight are a very different musical style to one of my favourite bands called Suede, and <laughs> there's a very famous uh, uh, song, their first song on um, Dogman Star from 94, is called Introducing. So I've got introducing the band and i've got that going through my head at the moment but um <laughs> i'm not going to go i'm not going to sing any more uh suede lyrics i'm going to simply go straight to our fabulous guests tonight um who will introduce themselves so we have gabby alicia emily and maddie and this is the first time i've 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 met them um kate uh sent sent me their uh, so, some links to some of their music and I like it a lot um, I'm a, a bit of a musical snob it has to be said you know it's, um, and you know if I, if I didn't like it I probably wouldn't be here now so uh, <laughs> so uh, so uh, unfortunately they're not going to be as you can see they're all in separate places so they're not unfortunately not going to be able to play for us tonight another um, time but <laughs> may, maybe um, when, when they do some plugs later on about where they're going to be playing in the future people will like to go along and, and and seek them out live that's that's the, that's the best thing to do um and hopefully by the end of tonight they you will viewers will be um uh will go and look at some links buy a cd or you know whatever is that bigging you up enough is it so so um who, who wants to go first hi my name's alicia I am singer and fruity box player for Fair's Lake. And hi, I'm Gabby. I am also singer and guitarist and tambourine, and I'm learning the concertina. <laughs> hi, I am uh, Nem or Emily, and I am chaotic goblin pomper. Uh, I do a lot of the introductions between the songs as well as backup singing. Uh, some little bits of percussion, the seeds, the thunderbox, and uh, occasionally, very occasionally, a violet surf. Hello, and uh, I'm Madi. I'm here mainly just for the exotic accent, I guess. Uh, <laughs> also the very, the very uh, uh, deep radio voice, I hope, maybe in your career. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, I play uh, drum and bass and hang drum and jaw harp and uh, anything they really allow me to play with as folk. I do not sing, no one wants that. <laughs> we're, we're, trying. Trying. we're trying really hard to get her to sing, because she can sing, with, she just won't. With, <laughs> with, a, with an accent like that, when we were talking, one of the things we were grinning at is that we were talking before and it was guess the accent, a, accent time for Maddie. Uh, and I went Irish, uh, North Yorkshire. We're not going to give it away, um, so, viewers, if you want to take a punt at what Maddie's accent is, um, I think it'd be really interesting to see what people's take is on that. But with a, with a voice like that, there has definitely got to be a, a very exotic um, sort of singing vocal uh, within that. I think you should definitely do that. I mean, yep. from, from what you've said, you all have this huge array of instruments that you play across um across the board and when anybody listens to your music um you, you kind of get the feeling that you're like you know sort of probably near as, as big as halong as, as a band <laughs> you know you expect that that kind of presence on stage of a, as many people and uh, me and neil were chatting earlier and he was saying you know um I, I, I likened it to Halong, but I, I said it was like um, it's 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 a fun Halong kind of <laughs> vibe. I think that you've got going on. That it's that my really favorite kind of... review we've ever had. Yeah, you know, well, well, right up here. here. <laughs> well, well, that, that's that's uh, okay. That's that's a brilliant segue because obviously 
uh, many of our viewers are not going to have heard you before. So I don't know who wants to go, but, you know, what do you sound like? That's Gabby and Alicia on that one. So we, we describe our genre variously as dark folk, dark folk rock, dark folk cabaret. With a touch of fantasy in there fantasy as well. folk punk. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll take any genre, so really. It's, it's acoustic, <laughs> and we use um, sort of traditional and world instruments. We're very, very oh. focused on um, vocal harmonies and using sort of um, different vocalisations from sort of, again, folk and, and world music to really kind of create a, uh, a wall of sound just from four people. And then the songs themselves have got a very heavy celtic folklore influence as well so we take the subject matter very much from folklore um and that's we're just getting deeper and deeper into that for the second album the songs i'm so excited can't wait to to record them but certainly with this first one as well we're, we're yeah getting into that folklore kind of vibe and when you say celtic it can range from you know really like a sort of proto tribal sounding music all the way through to like a good old knees up in the pub yeah, the no. first album, <laughs> yeah, we love that. Our first album, Coven, uh, find us on uh, Spotify or your local music downloading site. But our first album has, I think, a nice little bit of everything. I think we've got a few of our more sea shanty type stuff. We we also love a bit of the piratical sea shanty vibe because, again, knees up, fun, sort of fun of music. Some of our darker stuff that leans into the darker sides of folklore and really scary. Jeez. What was it? One of our very first festivals, um, a small child came up to us and said uh i liked your first song your second song was really scary oh which was horrible but then her dad messaged us after the event and said on the entire drive home she just kept asking to listen to the scary ladies again scary ladies so I, 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 yeah, that, that's absolutely spot on i, I remember actually um I remember snippets of seeing you at Three Wishes because I met you guys, uh, you know, not this, not this gone Three Wishes, the Three Wishes before, um, and I, I remember, and, and I don't want to sound rude, but the the Buccaneers were there, so um, room was in a plenty, uh, but I remember dancing. I remember having a, a jolly good time and it, there was a Excellent. lot of the uh, shanty type music going off, which was right up my street <laughs> after I'd been yeah. swigging back the room for the evening. <laughs> We like to cover all areas. We want to sort of bring in the joy and the, the fun of it all. We, we love to in, sort of encourage that, that uh, having a great time on stage and having fun and joy. But then we also move get from into being that. Very bad. Like, I like shows that move from being quite atmospheric and very much like us staring down the world with the smoke machine yes. and the wind yes. in our heads. <laughs> Big and harmonies, yeah, love it. Yes. Um, and then just kind of melt all the way into uh, pirates dancing on the tables. So we like to bring in the audience interaction a bit at a time. Yeah, that's what Nem saw. And so when you, you would have seen us, we were using backing tracks at that time, but now right, we're like a yeah. fully, fully live band now. Right, so right. I was just gonna say, uh, and that's Addy's saw... joining. Yeah, so I was gonna say, if you saw us slash them because I wasn't in a band yet uh mm -hmm. then that was yeah a couple of years ago not even it was actually last year oh god uh oh, no. yeah it was uh 2023 um so I'll be curious to know what you what you feel mm -hmm. like uh you know what it's like for you now because you can compare it because we, we had a lot of uh uh quite a few audience that saw us uh you know pre live music so when when we still had uh when I was still a roadie at the time and uh uh, so with the backing tracks and then and then the live music now, which is a quite different experience for us as well. But it's yeah. always nice to to hear what people feel, and you know, it's it's a, a very different because approach. I yeah, I, I tell you what, I I had no idea using backing. I had no idea there was no yeah. there there was there was nothing about it that that felt like it wasn't a full experience at all. And I think the other thing that um. I, I liked is you do talk about you know these these darker more witchy type songs that you sing and obviously very earthy and then the kind of halongy type stuff and then these sea shanties and it sounds like it's going to be a real chaotic ride but it's a chaotic ride that absolutely kind of you know it, it's seamless it's there doesn't seem to be um any disjointing uh, between these kind of subtle genres that that you kind of mill around and explore. So it wasn't like 
what the crap are they doing now? You know, there was no, no <laughs> idea of that at all. It was just, you know, you take it down and yeah. bring it up. It was, it was, yeah. uh, but the, I think the thing for me was, and I got it from the whole crowd, was such a sense of fun and such a sense of passion about what you do. And that comes across in bag loads. You know, it's a very, you feel like you're personally involved in your kind of fun that you're having on stage. You look Yay. like you're, you're just having a whale of a time. We yeah. do. We, we, no, we, we love the performance. Like we, we're we just a group of friends who happen to all of, oh, you play a bit of that, yeah, you play a bit of that, oh, yeah, let's go, you know. <laughs> we're there for each other, really, and yeah. the audience is just along for the ride. Yeah. So I'm really yeah. glad they're enjoying it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In regards to the flow of the of the sets, though, as well, is I think that it's quite cool that we have Nem sort of on board as partly almost like a storyteller as well, and I think it helps with the flow of the set yeah. and that you'll be like, oh, you know, you've just had this epic thing, but now, we're going to take you somewhere else you know and it kind of signals it so it doesn't feel too disjointed big witchy song suddenly shanty you know like that yeah, would feel yeah. a bit like disjointed and a bit weird it's also interesting because it's it's about folk music as well and it kind of it kind of also is interesting to see the genre of music within the genre as well because mm -hmm. those all of those you know songs and kind of songs even if yeah they, they do sound a bit different rhythmically they're going to be different they're gonna they're gonna um, you know bring different kind of energy you're gonna have a slow dancey one in front of the stage or the one that people we want people to jump on the table but at the end of the day it's a very <laughs> uh and and folk kind of music we just go and get it a little bit everywhere which is which is also very interesting for us so so all right so going back to that that's really interesting um and you you're talking about influences in terms of genres you know celtic music and and folklore itself and whatever but what about what about the bands that have influenced you in terms of how you've come to the to, to the band you are now because whenever i listen to someone new first thing i'm always doing is right where they're getting that from where, you know, are they plugging into sort of late sixties psychedelic folk yeah. rock? You are a bit, but it's um, but then there's almost sort of a gothic feel. It's a gothic, you know. <laughs> you're, you're not, you're not, you're not quite feels of the Nephilim, but um, it's uh, there, there is that kind of rumbling about it, and 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 you'd have to have sort of some some big bloke with a growly voice to to sort of properly do the uh, <laughs> do, do 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 the gothic <laughs> thing. So so let's know. No, thank you. What, 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 what? <laughs> don't need a big bloke doing anything. I don't think. Thank you very much. <laughs> don't, don't say anything against Fields of the Nephilim, though. But uh, uh, so, <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. those okay. big blokes can do what they yeah, like. they can do what they like. Yeah. <laughs> so come on, what, what's so, so name some bands um, from whatever period that have influenced you. I mean, you. I mean, Alicia and I, are a couple of metalheads. You know, we kind of started this folk duo kind of by accident. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's a kind of hilarious and like the name we sort of came up with the name one time we as a joke as a joke yeah and then we just Ran sort of away, started doing some folky kind of covers but kind of taking them into a darker sort of place so we well the first one we started with like the a little bit of Fleetwood Mac for the yeah moments. yeah <laughs> yeah um and, and then some some traditional folk yes so. yeah a bit, yeah a bit more sort of trad stuff but then like like bands that I was really into, like of the sort of within metal folk stuff, people like Copiclani, Turisas, you know, that were a kind of like a big influence to me. But then since then, I've started listening to like SJ Tucker yeah. and like uh, Longest Johns, like Dave a whole bunch Bard. of uh, Dave the Bard. We love oh, Dave. We love oh, Dave. We love Dave. Oh, so, to Saying recently, it's really interesting that, um, so my my background is I used to be in a symphonic metal band. So I bring a lot of those influences in very like operatic oh, <laughs> vocals, yeah. but trying to tone that down a more folky setting, but keeping the drama. Um, but I was saying it's really interesting. All my favorite bands on Spotify used to be stadium fillers, you know, the really big mm -hmm. in the metal genre, the serious like classic rock, 70s, 80s. 90s. Oh yeah. Um, and now, over the past year, the music that I listen to and the music that I want on my CD player are all people we know personally. And we've been so lucky to make these connections. Yeah, amazing. Golden Apple as well. Oh, uh, we we supported them. And they they were just an absolute joy. Yeah. For me, it's interesting for me because obviously most of our well, 
And uh, for those that don't know, uh, most of the songs, especially on the first album, uh, pretty much all the songs, in fact, all of the songs on the first album, Robin, uh, were written by Gabby and Alicia in a sort of combo um, with some input, I think, Gabby from your dad, which we'll talk about later. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Um, but so that's the musical influences of that. But I found quite interesting is that for me, as this kind of like introductory role that I started out with, my influences were actually. Uh, a sort of combination. So there's a band called Steam Powered Giraffe, which are a steampunk band, and they have this really, really strong. They, it's characters. They play these characters. It's almost like sort of an opera and a performance rather than just just a band. And I always loved that. I loved bands really committed to the bit and found a vibe and really not just like oh lean into it, but really go there. So that was one thing. And then also Gabby herself as Edwin the Bard, a character in the LARP system we play. And uh, Gabby's character is a, is a very famous bard amongst the LARP system, <laughs> the live action role play system we play. And that, the sort of fun we would have at the Scenes and Stories event and that kind of vibe and that kind of interactive thing was something that I thought, this is actually so much fun and something that, I think we could actually take out of this field and out of this game and bring that to audiences. And I think they would actually have a great time. It's, it's giving an audience permission to play along for a little bit mm -hmm. and to like come along with the fantasy, come along into that world for a bit. Come on, that'd be great. That's brilliant. Yeah, so that's How a about... good point, actually, Nem, because like, yeah, I, I definitely I estimated actually how much LARP. And playing at Songs of Stories at Empire LARP, where we yeah, where we do LARP. Uh, I just said LARP about a million times. Um, <laughs> and uh, but yeah, that has really actually quite heavily influenced. Mm. I think the way that I that I've written stuff for Phase Folk. And one of the big influences there is a friend of ours there um, who uh, called Jamie Jamie Wakefield. If you want to look up people, he's got loads of stuff on SoundCloud and is really really great great musician, great songwriter. Um, and it's definitely been like quite a big, big influence to me as well with writing this stuff with Phase Folk, I think. Yeah, people in the LARP community, um, it's a bit of a, an in-joke. They talk about um, the the filk genre, which was based on a just a misspelling on the page saying they attempted to say that folk music is very important <laughs> um, in these settings, but they wrote filk music. So that, that is what we <laughs> sing around a campfire. <laughs> and that's sort of how... music becoming uh, acoustic folk musicians, you know, coming down from the heady heights of symphonic metal yeah. to yeah. Uh, <laughs> acoustic well, harmonies yeah. with yeah. a uh, guitar by a campfire. Like, yeah. uh, that became the main driving force in, in my life. Yeah, Because, yeah, essentially what filk is for those who are sort of there, the, the sort of premise of filk is taking modern day songs and changing them in such a way that they fit a medieval fantasy setting. So um, the, the game we play is set in a sort of fantastical, magical world with different, uh, like, you know, we've got briars and dryads and all this sort of stuff. So it's a sort of magical world and uh, there's no modern technology and things like that. So you have to take a song that exists. There's a lot of people can't write their own songs. It's quite a lot to expect of someone. But if you're around a campfire, you might get to sing a song you know, but if you're in this fantasy world, you don't want to sing about TV or, or you know, modern day places. So everybody just tends to change the lyrics so that they make sense within the game world. And then because you're singing it well around the fire, usually with drums and, you know, acoustic guitars, it changes the sound to really often a sort of strong, funky theme. So how much you shift that depends on, I think, the scale of the individual, but that sort of idea of taking a modern day song and changing it so that it fits into a more magical folky setting is is the sort of behind as a that's that's so interesting <laughs> what, what about you maddie um what, what are your influences um i mean it's quite hard to, to to tell for me really i mean i've uh i guess i discovered folk music uh as a genre quite late in in fairly recently really um but I grew up listening to a lot of music, uh, a, a lot of different things, electronic music, quite a lot, uh, and music of the world. And uh, particularly uh, since uh, since I was a child, I was very drawn to uh, rhythm and percussions and uh, African rhythm and stuff like that. And my mom used to listen to a lot of really cool, uh, really cool music. So I was 
it was always around me. So very uh, uh, predictably, very uh, young. I just wanted to uh, be able to uh, beat things and and bash things on things and make noise. <laughs> and um, and um, I quickly discovered that you can make noise with anything as long as you play with it. So that's pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> and I did. Um, but um, yeah, influence is a very a very different different kind of music for me really but i think what 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 is uh what is cool with first folk for me is that i am completely allowed uh, even encouraged to uh to buy a very big drum and uh and just <laughs> <laughs> yeah and just beat that skin um, <laughs> but, um yeah i think i've always wanted to play drums I've, I've been playing drum and percussions for a very long time and uh bass a bit more recently so um and the hang drum for 10 years so Really, anything that is quite rhythmical, um, 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 I like, which also it also reflects in the, in the kind of music that I like and and enjoy. Uh, but it would be really hard for me to point out. It's very, uh, yeah, I would have like a thousand names, but I can't. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, you can literally hand Maddie. You can hand Maddie anything and give her. Five what was it, Gabby? You gave her the concertina. So and the concertina, long? I had been like diligently trying for like a couple of weeks going through the book trying to work out the scales like <laughs> you know like sounding terrible and Maddie literally picks it up fiddles and goes da -da 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 <laughs> within 10 <laughs> seconds I'd worked out the Jurassic Park theme <laughs> This is why we think we are fairy birds. Matt, but the really Maddie is, I don't think, on this realm. <laughs> Maddie has a little bit of magic in her, which yeah. is really good for anything. 100%. To make it sound. Uh -uh. So, talking about magic, where's the name from? Where where did that, where was that conjured up? After the pub? <laughs> yeah, we were, we were at the pub. I'd just been kicked out of a band. And I was very sad oh, about no. it. We were. Um... It's it's kind of just a lot of puns wedged together. Yeah, you know, I, the, it's... the the sirens of. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, it's it references queer as folk. Uh, yeah, it can be fair as fair as far. But then, um, sort of talking about it, the notion of literally, what does it mean? It is the fae come to your stage tonight as. Oak as yeah. one of you um, mm -hmm. amongst the people yeah um and that's very much the persona that we kind of drew from it yeah that like we have adopted these glamours just to come through the veil and you don't know how many eyes we might have on that side of it but this side of it <laughs> this is what we look like yeah. <laughs> but in, in, in talking about fairies i mean obviously because um hair in the hawthorn we we are predominantly sort of exploring the notions of 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 the fair folk um and i'm always interested to find out uh, to start with you know what people's perceptions are what, what kind of influenced you or um at what point did you go fairies are in my life fairies are part of my existence and part of who i am where where, where did that all start for you all great question who wants to go first so, so i'll start with an anecdote um when i was three and this is no word of a lie they would ask what i wanted to do when i grew up and i said deadpan i want to be a fairy and they laughed and said oh, how about a nurse or a teacher and I have showed them all. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Um, in a more general sense, like my my belief in fairies, um, such as it is, is kind of an imaginative manifestation of a wider belief in what some might call the Holy Spirit or the spirit of the land or our ancestral spirit, some kind of implacable force of nature that is at once very knowable, but very hard to describe. And mm -hmm. so my my kind of intellectual and spiritual joy often comes from exploring ways in which ancient cultures use story and song and allegory in order to discuss the indescribable um, mm -hmm. and I think that the the fae the she the holder folk mm -hmm. drawing from my own cultural background like are all members of that world um, which Baroness Mary studied like describes as uh, imaginative truth it's it's stories that actually 
allow us to speak of things that are more real than reality. And so I often think of, of fairies as uh, sort of necessary intercessors between what the human mind can cope with and like the vast sublime of nature. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that as a band, we're actually really privileged because by stepping into the role of bards, a very real historical role, mm -hmm. we take on a, a similar role um, to that of these, these mythical legendary beings. We keep the old stories alive. We clear pathways between mankind and nature and spirit. Um, and so in a sense, we like literally exist as a fae. Mm. That's yeah. right. I, I absolutely, absolutely love the way you 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 you, you phrased that. Um, in terms of uh, you know, there are kind of uh, the fairies are a holding point between, like I say, human human consciousness and a greater consciousness, and there's got to be some filter in between the two, um, yeah. and that can be, that can be many things. But uh, I like I I very much like that. Uh, that's you know, I've written about that that type of thing in that the fairies are intercessors for for a greater consciousness for humanity because as you as you just said there if we just got that greater consciousness downloaded in one go you wouldn't be able mm. to deal with it um and so it's, it's a that, concept that evolves and changes with mankind as well you mm. know our, our notion of fairies has gone from being something very uh chthonic and very dangerous to being something that that children relate to and i think as society changes then so does the way we intercess with spirit and so it's really exciting to go back and dig up some of these old notions of fairies of older folk and uh explore some parts of the human condition that maybe we've buried over their generations mm. so so when you're on yeah. when you're on stage it's um I'm, I'm trying to think of a better better word than supernatural but do, do you feel a supernatural you know for want of a better word presence I mean, there, when you're on stage there, when we play when we play our song coven there are sometimes some points when it all just comes together and you see you know there'll be an an, an older lady with white hair at the back like crying and you'll be like <laughs> and casting kids a spell. In the front yeah, children like... dancing and, and that time we actually summoned done... a... that time we summoned that circle of like everyone's yeah. Yeah, there's like, like a fairy circle going around and it really feels time. like you're casting a spell yeah. you know it really played, feels like you're played, summoning um... something that it's really uh yeah certainly within feels very sort of powerful Mm. Uh, the 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 recent the most recent uh, fan, uh was it fantasy forest we played that on the big yeah. stage and we played uh, we've got a song uh called morrigan and uh, as we played it so we there's a, there's a few jokes in the introduction that nem does and all that we play the song we say morrigan 67 times in the song and then yeah. uh, and then as we finish the song there's a, a whole murder of crows just like flying above the above the stage and like there's been nothing for the past you know 20 minutes and then obviously the audience start to to noticing oh, it people like, are going, oh. looking, <laughs> looking over there and then we all look and we're like oh my god yeah that's 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 amazing so there is certainly there is certainly magic in in everything right if you if you open enough to see yeah. it and 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 i think that the the beauty also of um you know the our music and the the beautiful lyrics that um, Gabby and Alicia, you know, work on is that it really it has that it has that simplicity that folk has, but it's also said beautifully and it's very poetic. And I think that um, when people are really, <laughs> and I think that when people really want it and appreciate it, and then you know drinking in and and you can see that there are there's some connections happening there's some things going on whether you know we we might describe it different different ways and we might feel it different ways but there is definitely and then a and then there's definitely something <laughs> <And> undeniable <laughs> undeniable i think is what you're after <laughs> right, one of one, our yeah. unreleased songs that we wrote this last year is and it's very, you know, oh, sort of about <laughs> meditating, reconnecting with nature. Wait, 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 it, can you just repeat that? You, you froze for an instant. Ground yourself. Right. 
um it's it's a song we're working on currently so it, it, the chorus um features the line four as one speaking as the the elements earth air fire and water four as one but the more like over the course of this summer as we a group of four women have adventured together and we've played that song in the Stonehenge circle yeah, we played that epic. song from sea to shining sea of this little realm and we've just like grown closer and stronger and now just those lyrics it feels like this kind of soaring rising mm -hmm. togetherness yes. that binds yes. us so and good. something bigger than us we've also we that's like, particularly exciting for us because we sort of discovered through very organically i love the sort of magic of how organically we've discovered some things such as we had this sort of thought about there's the earth air fire and water and we were talking about oh no we could each have an element wouldn't that be great but we sort of thought about it like wait we asked people and we talked within ourselves and we realized each of us felt connected to a different element but we already talking about that you know, and if you want to be very very to the air, but like Morgan, we we just want to be all sort of like cool things and something like that. So that's sort of thing. Gabby, uh, fire, obviously fiery. At the time, I think you had very red hair, which helped. But also, yeah, you're yeah. a very passionate, powerful person who just brings light into everyone. Like everyone who meets <laughs> Spanish Gibraltarian. <laughs> Everyone who meets Gabby, like she's a shining light, it's amazing. Um, I remember when Maddie joined and Gabby was like, oh my god, Maddie's definitely Earth, like really connected to nature and love. Like if you watch, um, the, the, we did have a music video on the cover, which we haven't finished, but we'll be on some time in the coming year, keep an eye on, on the YouTube and all these sorts of things. Uh, but the entire time, Maddie's barefoot, <laughs> running around in the mud. Barefoot. That was a commitment because it was so cold committed. by the end of the sure. day. <laughs> So oh, we'll commit to the bit. Yes, Maddie yes. grows. Maddie's got such a green thumb, grows things, this, that, and the other. And then water, I am, um, as well as my sort of chaotic fire. Uh, actually, I'm also known online uh, as Amanda Goodling, a uh, chaotic uh, TikToker who goes into beaches and finds sea glass. And I have this real strong connection with the sea. I've always really felt very, very strongly about the sea. So I sort of discovered that each of us kind of innately all felt connected to each of these different elements. But that we weren't even like just trying to decide or fighting for it. We just straight away were like, oh, it's we are earth, air, yeah, fire, and water, yeah. and we have all come together as four as one in this band, and it just kind of works, which is really cool. And to, to give it to give a, a last, if you if you allow me to give a last uh, example of. Uh, that how that magic works sometimes. Uh, we had our album launch on the 3rd of July. Uh, and uh, if you remember the date, uh, it was the the um, voting day the day after. And we, we played for the very first time uh, a new song that is called Bind Them that will be on our next album. Uh, and uh, we played Bind Them exclusively, first time ever for our audience that came for our album launch and all that. And... Uh, it's basically, uh, I mean, Gabby will uh, be able to tell you. Do you want to give us more. a rundown of Find Them, Gabby? Oh, I mean, it's basically down with the Tories. <laughs> I mean, in a very sort of thinly veiled, it's, you know, our evil overlords. Boo them. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then, yes, it is a song of revolution. Up. We woke up the that's it. It started the revolution basically, and we woke up the day after with a with a great news uh front page of newspaper. So it was it was pretty good. But again, that's it. That was you kind of it. yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah. So we we couldn't help by saying to each other, "We made it. We did it." <laughs> just like, what, what happens if you actually do discover that through this binding of the four of you that you literally can cast proper spells out into that would that's be a responsibility sure. that would be an amazing a... theory i think you got you onto something there <laughs> make, make a uh, wb uh, comedy drama about it <laughs> four girls one magic <laughs> I'll tell you what, I, I must just make a quick quick comment of that you know uh, from you know certainly I'm very not Tory, um, but, uh, you know, I don't want to go off on a, on a political thing here, but why didn't you do this a few years ago when Jeremy Corbyn was wanted wanted to be Prime Minister? I the world was not ready. Where our timing, the world was our not timing ready. wasn't great on that one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for sure, yeah. Oh, for sure. <laughs> There's a man who doubts himself. Yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> 
Well, if I, if I ever want anything doing, it's your, you four that I'm coming to, honestly. If I, you know, <laughs> Lex breaking or changing the world but or whatever. You know, it, I'm... It, it's certainly a part of our, you know, within, I mean, you know, we three of us live together. And then when we go and play at festival, we're always together. We spend lots of time together. Mm. And there's always a couple of tarot cards around. It's certainly also, it's not just a show, do you know what I mean? Like it's it's yeah. it's also very much a part of whether we I think we have different connection. We we got our own spirituality and, and journey with it. And it's a very personal thing. But uh, at the end of the day we are very happy, grateful and very open mm. to positive stuff good energy and we're curious about you know yes the plants and the stuff and yes we do each other's tap every now and then and uh, you know so so that's, it's also yeah that's for for different people we do come from quite sort of different spiritual and religious backgrounds mm. yeah you know, i wow. had a a wedding that uh, started off in a 12th century church and then ended up with a hand fasting in the garden over an anvil it was the best. I've never swords. seen so many swords at a wedding ever. <laughs> so we we all kind of bring our different influence so openly and all contribute to something and sort of lean into each other's notions of prayer and meditation and um and there's there's never been any sense of difference. Mm-hmm. Only only the core that keeps it all sane, keeps it all together. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, it's funny because I think if you'd if you'd come to me maybe like sort of five or six years ago, I think I was very like in a very staunch and uh, like scientific and sort of cl- but in a closed minded kind of way. Um, but I've certainly had a bit of a sort of a, a, a journey in kind of spirituality and just becoming a lot more open to the prospect of just that there's so many ways to be well. There's so many ways to connect with the world and with the earth. And, you know, it's it's been a real a real journey and it's such a you know privilege to do it with these with these three mm. women it's just amazing I mean it, it definitely comes through in, in in your music that it's not just the music that the music is is just a seamless part of mm. of the way you live your lives and and how you are together you know it's not like you're just disparate musicians that come together in a recording studio and then just go out on the road every now and again there, there, there is a definite sense of you know this unity and it's it's all part of the ebb and flow of of your kind of day-to-day existence and i i know sort of seeing you skipping around three wishes um you know you got the sense of that's you at home you know yeah. that, 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 <laughs> that's you guys at home it's you know because you got this feeling that it was absolutely no different at all from <laughs> yeah. from your everyday existence yeah it's very much the thing, but, um, I can know. imagine i can imagine who who wears the wings who wears the wings ah. at home? I mean, <laughs> I mean to be fair, they're, they're probably all three of them. I just, I just wear a, a massive wok or a frying pan on my back. I think that's more my thing. <laughs> but three of them would wear wings, but very different kind of wings. I think uh, I can see, I can, I can see it very clearly. Mm. I think that's yeah, what's that... nice is we all have sort of. It. In a way, we all have that sort of like expertise in so many different areas that we all sort of take over just in the areas that we each of us naturally feels or confident in or, or whatever. But even that, if not in a I'm controlling this now, do what I think, it gets in a very comfortable there. So I'll look after that. But it's in a very different way. I think it's very different. Funny, you, you mentioned the wings, but uh, I, I, might, I might go quickly to something we said slightly earlier but uh my certainly in my culture and as far as i knew i mean i also had that idea that fairy all i knew of fairies uh or fair was the fairies that you got in cartoons right and uh, yeah. also there's also a, a song that we open and so we say you know there's a uh all fair are uh valid and and uh, and loved and you know you can be you can have sparkly blue and pink uh, wings or you can have scrubby you know dark black broken wings like it doesn't matter but but um uh it's certainly moving in in england even when i moved in england i did i wasn't really surrounded by that uh that culture and the fantasy world and all that so that that discussion the conversation was not really happening around me so again that's a very new thing for me and you know meeting the girls and and uh having you know, chat about it and going out on the road and doing all those festivals. I realized how um, 
everyone also kind of have their own idea of what it is and it's almost that concept that is just something precious and you you represent it the way you want to represent it you imagine it the the way you want to imagine it it's your own but we all kind of know what it means but it never looks the same if that makes sense uh, yeah. yeah very, very yeah. much so I mean for, for those who know the show you know they know um, myself and Neil are, are big fans of Brian and Wendy Froud's work you know and that oh, diversity yeah. that their work uh, shows you know from the very sort of dark earthly type characters right the way through to those that are made of light and it is that kind of all-encompassing isn't it yeah, I, I've, I've we're, got we're I've, big dark crystal people here yeah, exactly. uh, yeah. what, what yeah. gelfling would you be yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you'll have to see if you can get see, see if they do another new one another new one because they've already done a new one and see if yeah. you can get on it Oh, that'd be amazing! Imagine. Oh, oh. Yeah, feature song, feature song on that would just be awesome from you guys. I've yeah. got to ask: Have just in general, it doesn't have to be fairy. Um, any supernatural or paranormal experiences? Have any of you had like? Because it sounds like you've all kind of had epiphanies with um, this this notion of fairy and what it's opened up in it in a spiritual sense. Have you had anything like seriously weird? sort of happened to you that's been like no idea what that was um i personally i kind of had but in a dream so okay um but it was a life-changing kind of dream uh and i had just finished uh, siddhartha uh the book from of uh, herman s and uh and i remember finishing the book putting it down and that very night i had a, a very uh, um very vivid dream um and it was within the dream I was also exploring my own my own femininity and my connection with with I mean all the elements were present and and you know the 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 triad of anything you can imagine you know it, it was it was a very complex and uh, and uh, deep thing and uh, I certainly woke up from that night different wanted to talk about it and and mm -hmm. feeling feeling really different so um I don't know where that stands in you know your question but I think that's the first thing that comes to to mind for me, and I'm I'm always oh. very uh, welcoming uh, with that kind of thing. Like, uh, oh, my, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I think yeah. this for me would be the the first thing that comes to mind. Yeah, it sounds it sounds like you've pro processed something very important from the material into the subconscious through yeah. through dreams, and it's embedded, yeah. um, and it's needed at that point to to embed that deeply into your subconscious. And it's it's amazing when you wake up in the morning and you, and you're like that. How how can just that you know twenty five minutes of dream state just completely change? how yeah. you think and how you feel and um, even if it's just briefly over a few days to life changing so Absolutely. it definitely comes up in, into that into that surrealness mm -hmm. anybody else have anything weird go on Sorry, was, you're, you're, we can't hear you very well because oh. your your mic's gone a bit bit very quiet oh. now you sound like you're, you're american underwater <laughs> Well, yeah, she's water, so that makes sense. Yes, 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 there you go. There you go. Before we started, we did say that when you start talking about the fairies, we we do get lots of weird shenanigans. And there you go, the shenanigans. Uh, is... yeah. So, Mimey, how is that? Is that any better? Yeah. That's much better. Oh, perfect. Yeah. There perfect. we go. Perfect. Fabulous. Fabulous. So... Fixed that. Oh, the chaos begins. The goblins, they got into they got into the laptop. Terribly sorry. I'll evict <laughs> them now. <laughs> so for me, I think one of the things that uh, I remember, it was when I was very young, I had this book uh, that I loved that was, um, it was spirituality and it had everything. It had, you know, a rundown. Everyone's had this kind of book. It had rundown of all the major, you know, big religions and also a rundown of spirituality. It had all the crystals and their main thing. It had the Chinese zodiac, the regular zodiac, star sign, sun, all of that stuff in it. And I used to just pour over that over and over and over again. I loved it. And in there, there was this little corner in there, which I think the, T the sort of language of it at the time was summoning a guardian angel and I think in my head I viewed it more as a guardian rather than the angel part oh you know but that and I remember going through that in my kitchen and I was about six five or six years old and sat on the kitchen floor with this book and going through the instructions on how to summon and connect with your guardian angel and 
it just feels like that I'm very, very privileged. I've had a fantastic life and I've had a lot of lucky breaks, a lot of things. And it has always, I just feel a lot of the time, like it does feel like there's a little, I've had that little extra connection. It always sometimes feels there's a little someone there. Sometimes they're busy. And so sometimes there are, obviously there are always days that are a bit rough, but it, it has always just felt like that little thing when you drive somewhere and it's a green light, the whole everywhere, it's a green, you hit every green light on the way. And whenever that sort of thing happens, I always go, oh, thanks. It always, there's always like a little, oh, thanks. Cause it just feels like I, it feels sometimes like I did summon something and that mm. they are, they are there. Um, I'm so a visual, a very visual person and I have, I have yeah. a vision of you as a, as a child with a big cooking pot and going to summon a guardian, you need a bay leaf and you need some tea in there and a bit of sugar and you stir it up on the stove. So I've got yeah, that image in my head now. That. <laughs> so you've that cooked, was up <laughs> cooked up your yeah, own garden. Cooked up your own garden. That does sound very, yes, pretty much, actually, almost <laughs> spot on. <laughs> Brilliant. I'll have to remember that. I'll go down and do that tomorrow. I'll cook up my own guardian. Cook up your guardians. I, <laughs> I think that they, that um, as well, you know, doing something like that as a child and um, learning how to be grateful and seeing all those green lights instead of seeing the one red light, you know, yeah. is, is, a, is an achievement in life, isn't it? By going, going forward and saying had these fantastic experiences yeah things have been crackly sometimes but you know for the majority of the time it's an amazing life that we lead and and the people we meet and the things that we do and how we function so yeah I'm definitely cooking up my angel Being tomorrow open to, to little miracles you know yes. if you if you have your eyes open to wonder it will find you and for definitely. me like the notion of of the paranormal it's never been very divorced from from the normal which is nature which mm. is earth and so like ideas of of when do I feel like touched <laughs> by by yeah. something bigger by the, the spirit um it's all moments of awe and it's being mm. out there I'm a, a cold water swimmer um oh brilliant and so for me like the most like mind blown connected to the universe moment is is when you step into the cold water you're completely immersed and there is nothing no no voices in your head no patterns that we get taught by each other it all just gets erased to make way for that like raw animal need to survive <laughs> and your awareness of your surroundings which is god mm. which is spirit which is nature however you want to name it is something that we all experience and so i try and make sure that i find time for all and and give myself the opportunity for miracles mm. I, I totally agree I, I i don't think that there's any there's no line between the paranormal supernatural and and what we experience it's all before us it's just having the eyes to see isn't it and having the the openness like you say to to be able to experience those things and how you experience them and when you experience them it, it, it can be very much at a point in your life when it's needed or when it's asked for um it's it's it is. I find it very, very bizarre. Um, I'm, a, I'm a paranormal investigator, so I, I kind of come across, you know, quite, quite odd things. And I find it very bizarre when somebody says, "I've had nothing." You know, I, I, I can't think of anything miraculous. I can't think of anything spooky. I can't think of, you know. And I, I just think, are you actually living on this planet? Because yeah. it kind of happens all the time, all the time to all kinds of, of, uh, of different people. I'm digressing mm. here. I knew that this was going to go astray. I am digressing. <laughs> Well, and then, then I was going to say that, like, on a much, like, smaller level, I remember when you had this uh, herb, uh, like, what was it called? Like, the Oracle deck. Oracle deck. And, like, you you were saying to me, do you know what? It's just, I'm not really vibing with any of the cards that I pull from it. Da, da, da. It's just it's not really kind of sitting right with me. And I took some and I pulled them out. And I can't remember exactly what they were. But it was at a point when things were quite difficult. And it, it just was like... Oh, on the money, on the money, on the money, like three <laughs> little cards drawn out. And it was just like, oh, that's your deck. <laughs> ha, okay, fine. And then another time, Nem was like, no, it's not. And so she just like gave them to me, essentially, was like, this is obviously your deck at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's not my I think that's it. to me. You have it. <laughs> I'm obviously drawing your cards, Gabby, because these mean nothing to me. And then you'd look at them and go, wow. And I'm like, just, just take them. They're for you, clearly. Yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> I love I love the concept. One of my favorite concepts, you see it sometimes online, you see people talking about it. One of my favorite concepts is ordinary magic. I love the joy, the magic and the the miracles of the mundane and how sometimes yeah. ordinary mundane things. And I think that's sometimes where people think that there's no magic is because they've gotten this idea that magic has to be these big, grand, huge, impossible things. And sometimes it's in the ordinary. It's it's in the little, you know, that little beautiful, yeah. perfect flower that's growing between the crack in the um, pavement. Mm -hmm. Like, how is that? How is the world aligned so that that happens? Um, I love every. I like to call it. There's things like the ordinary superpower. I have one, and I've recently had it happen again. It just keeps happening in my life, which is it's a very basic, simple thing. Medication works on me first time minimal side effects and that doesn't sound miraculous until you point out things like there are meds like the anyone who's been on the pill antidepressants i have multiple sclerosis i had to go on ms meds and i've recently been diagnosed with adhd and i've gone on adhd meds all of those are things which every time you start to go on them and start this journey you get warned it takes mm. a while You've got to try it, shop around. You'll be put on one. It won't work. Don't lose hope. You're going to have to try a few things. There'll be horrible side effects. It's going to take six weeks to kick in. All of these things. Every single time I've gone on one of these meds, the first one they put me on works. First time, <laughs> minimal side effects. The big one was the uh, antidepressants. They said it's going to take six weeks to kick in. Three days. I was I was great. Uh, every time. And it's just that little thing where it starts to feel like magic. I'm like, I can't be this lucky every single time. There must be. It just it just feels like that little, like an ordinary superpower. superpower. Yeah, that, 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 that's really interesting. The idea of uh, of everyday magic and the, the synchronicity of this is just amazing. Mm. I've had a, one of these little pop ups come on my screen from a podcast that I subscribe to. And it's uh, a quote from Carl Jung. Mm. And the quote is, why is modern man so weak and powerless? He has forgotten magic. Yes, the fear here. So Carl Jung <laughs> agrees with us. That's good. That's good. <laughs> yeah, good stuff. Well, that's what that's what Faye <laughs> spoke about. <laughs> We're here to remind. <laughs> Go, Maddie. Bounce back off of that uh, as well a little bit. Actually, while we were talking about it, it's a, a more a more. Uh, you know, obvious kind of example came to to mind if you if you don't mind me saying, but yeah. they um, where I grew up in a I won't say where, so we'll let uh, people guess. But it's, uh, on the back of the face, uh, yes. <laughs> but somewhere I used to go quite regularly as a child. Uh, it was quite a wild uh, spot, uh, and uh, and I mean it wild. And I would walk around uh, from six seven years old with my little walking stick and my knife on my on my belt in my belt and. Uh, I would go uh, what felt at the time like hours of walking on my own in the wild. I was never really that far, but in my head I was. And I was on my own. And in my head, I was Indiana Jones. I was, I just wanted to yeah. be an adventurer. I was, and, and I just remember having to, I had no other options but to connect with everything that was around me. Um, I had to understand uh how with the weather how quickly the mud or the cow down was drying because i wanted to know if it was safe for me to walk around or not where the moss was on the uh, the moss was on the on the tree or uh, was the the ground look like he's been you know moved by balls or whatnot so so i i had and very quickly i was like oh my god i can i can that's the best game like i don't remember having any Im uh, imaginary friends as a kid but nature was the one when I used to go to the beach. Uh, I would talk oh, to the, yes. the sea. I would talk to the water. I would be like, mm -hmm. I would talk to her and and challenge her with the waves and all that. And and in the mountains and and going on those walks, I think I it was a great way for me to not only discover and de develop my senses, all of them at once, because I would smell the trees and the plants and the, and all of that. And I would really in my head, I was like proper and. Uh, but I think it was also a very, very deep, like I, I was connecting mm. intimately and very deeply uh, with something that was both mysterious, simple and beautiful and dangerous and challenging and mm. reassuring. So it was all of the adjectives and all of the, the emotions was in that, in those two minutes of, you know. Uh, so I think that for me was something also very much... Uh, um, there's something special and I always, always see it, always see it around me. Like there, there's, 
Yeah. I think that's why I'm so happy to run around in the mud barefoot, even if the mud is really, really cold. Like <laughs> you I are feel Earth. intimate with it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we do live in an age where um, the, the where we don't listen to the land and we don't listen to the land talk back to us and we don't talk to the land so much anymore, do we? You, you know, we get caught up with daily life and when you mm. do do that, I mean, I, I've been quite obsessed with watching, um, and I don't know how true it is, but I give it a go. I'm going to confess this actually on the internet. I've been watching people doing airbending, so learning oh. how to airbend. And in, in real time, not just sort of, you know, um, on... on um, tv or what have you and they've been talking about the techniques which the techniques to me are very much in line with uh reading people's aura and doing reiki mm. you know so I, I kind of i thought you know that's not far off the whole kind of reiki concept and and that kind of thing so i, I sometimes go out on the back garden and i'm like let's see if i can do it can i get can i get that tree to kind of start swaying and stuff and it's but it's having that sense of wonder isn't it in in your natural environment how many of us watched matilda as a kid and tried to make Aww. the rice grain move across the table yes. like yes. Oh, yes. Oh, I, have, there you go. I have i have i have I have seen it and I know when, again, where I come from and there was a, a tiny village and there was that old guy, Blaise, he was like super tall, always wearing a hat and he was magical. The guy, you would, I, I remember I went in his garden when I was a kid and he put seeds in our hands and there was blue teeth came, that came in my hands. But it, we, we're in the wild, right? Those are not, those are not pets, but pets or whatever. Like that. And it would just really, he got really used and they got really used to him and the guy every day i think it was a cherry tree and he would put his hand on the tree and do like a weird thing and just kind of just pass his hands on the tree and all that and he would not the tree and he would go it would make the tree go however he wanted not by forcing it not mm. by pulling the branches and, and forcing it just by putting his hands on it that guy was always magical for me yeah. and mm. you know, that's something that he did, and he was clearly he was a druid, a hundred percent. Like, and and I feel like yeah. And I remember you looking just, at him, and was like, that was that's that's magic. Like, this is something yeah. amazing. So you just meet magic. some people. Sorry, Alicia, here you go. It it is magic, but it is also true. It is something mm -hmm. that is undeniable. He is choosing to interface with the world yeah. in a way that maybe used to be done by everyone and that we have forgotten we've forgotten mm -hmm. the skills we've forgotten the connection yeah. mm -hmm. and so that's part of like the joy of going and peeling back the layers reading all these old stories yeah. like dipping deep into the folk tradition is trying to find something that got lost along the way mm. Mm. i think abby talk a lot about people's vibes and that there are just some people you meet and you i sometimes meet someone and i think the greatest compliment i think i can pay someone is to meet them and go you're not of this world entirely are you yeah. there's something about them that just has that little bit of magic that little bit of wonder they've just got something about them that that just doesn't seem to behave in the mundane ordinary way that it, it's supposed to and we talk a lot about vibes and that some people just have the vibe and whatever the vibe is changes on situationally but often it's it's that little bit of magic that just makes you feel something like else I, yes. know, I know I'm I'm, I'm very blessed I, I I tend to meet 99 percent, including Neil over there 99 percent of people that I meet have that kind of you're not meant to be here we're we're not quite of this this side <laughs> of the veil you know we're, we're meant to be on the other side doing something much more fun than this this you know adulting crap you know uh, um, uh, right yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like there's an extent to which I believe that that none none of us are and none of us should be. We've we taught mm. ourselves basically post industrial oh, yeah, capitalism. Habits yeah, yeah, yeah. we've been able to shape. Um, and like, like I don't know. I think my my kind of notion of magic is a part of being human. It mm. is a part mm. of how how uh, this species was put on the world and what we were meant to be doing. Um, and we just forgot about. I, I often think about looking into old folklore. There's uh, the notion of the hollow hills, the the fairy mounds, you know, the mm -hmm. um, Aos She, literally mm -hmm. meaning the people of the hills. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they they speak very much of a, a mess. Everything was of the earth, was chthonic, um, womb to tomb. But, like, I went travelling in my sort of, ancestral homeland of the Isle of Man and I came face to face with evidence of um, these enormous turf roofed 
uh, roundhouses that were big enough, uh, the size of a football field, could a whole village could live in there. And I thought to myself then, like in an increasingly Christianized and industrialized society, that medieval Celts thinking of their grandmothers, 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 half side stories, these memories of great turf roofed domes with music and firelight and laughter spilling out of them. Is it any wonder that they said to themselves, that is magic? Mm. Yeah. Because I don't think they were. And I don't think that makes magic less wonderful to, to say it has a very mundane and very earthly reason to be. I don't think that saying like we share the same blood and memories as the she makes them any less, but rather it makes us so much more. Yeah, yeah definitely. I remember we we played um, at uh, Butser Ancient Farm, which yeah. is like a oh, yeah, like a in Hampshire. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's amazing. And, amazing. Uh, back there. We are. Halloween. Yes, we will be back there. We will just, be just at Butser Ancient Farm. Yes, on the twenty fifth. Um, I would say buy tickets, but it's sold out. <laughs> it is. Yes, <laughs> just girls. Um, and uh, yeah, there's something about playing completely sort of unamplified in a sort of Saxon style roof and everything that is really magical especially you've got the fire in the middle and getting everyone to like join in and like do certain bits of the songs and you know trying to mm. bring that element of everybody is here together we're all mm. singing together and you know yeah even the way that sound moves in that yes. structure it, it's mm. it's ancient it is a type of sound that people don't hear anymore you don't it's gone really know. everything bounces off everything and it's in a turf roof it just doesn't like just... looking into velvet but sonically. <laughs> yeah, yeah. sonic velvet bad name, sonic, right? bad bad name. name. i'm write writing it down, it down. Write it down. sonic velvet yeah, that's our sixth <laughs> yes yes, yes. And then, and i think I uh, what, what's really cool about that kind of thing, having something that is so niche yet so popular uh like that fantasy world and folk music and all that is that ultimately uh <laughs> The, the kind of people that come to our gigs or the festivals that we play at, we all have something in common. Whether we mm. whether we feel connected, whether we're all a bunch of nerds, whether we all, uh, um, you know, whatever it is, or we're just curious, but we all hear kind of, it's that niche uh, that everyone is here for for quite a personal reason. Um, mm. and uh, And also so very there is there is such a variety of people as well but ultimately and that when you were talking about when you were talking about the roundhouse that that's what you know reminded me of it because it's it's a small event there's a, it's a small roundhouse but this they sell out every year and it's amazing but people that come here they don't just walk in and walk by and and pass by and and think oh why not they like they know the place they know what's going on there they they're curious they want to travel they want to to go on a journey and uh, and it's you know have church to go... in a way yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah exactly. big Hampshire yeah. families who take their kids there for every Sabbath <laughs> I think that's community. that the community is exactly mm -hmm. I think that's one of the important mm -hmm. things when you talk about like obviously one of the premises of us coming and talking on this fantastic podcast we've had a whale of a time was <laughs> a fae and fairy magic and uh, fae and fairy magic with music in particular. I and mean, we talk about the magic of music. And yes, like absolutely, Gabby and Alicia's music and lyrics are, I think, truly magical in some of the stuff they do. But I think something that we as a band bring that amplifies that even further is as a band, I think we really do bring that community communal vibe. Mm -hmm. Partially, like my role, break. I we immediately break that fourth wall. We are not just a band who are playing you some songs. We break the fourth wall. We've created a world, and we're saying you, all of you, audience, you're part of this. If you're here in this audience, you are now currently in the band. You're in our coven. You're in our group. Come join us. Join us for the fun. And so come we drink we with us. <laughs> come drink with us. We try to create a sort of spontaneously, like in that one stage and in that one space, we try to create a community and make it a communal experience so it's not just you're listening to some music it's you're part of this experience with us and mm -hmm. i think that is one reason why people do seem to really like us and remember yeah. us and, and, that, and, and we do make our lovely and very keen and i think there's there's also a, that's it the coven the word coven also comes it's obviously mm -hmm. our album uh title and it's a very 
very cool song that I feel every time we play it just keeps gaining more power more there is something going on every time we play and I think that it's a, it's a perfect example of that there is at that point in that set uh, because it, we always play that one um, usually it's kind of in the middle of the set that's when uh, we usually uh, th- there's something happening with the audience like uh, mm-hmm. we either grab the ones that were not completely grabbed or grabbable so far mm-hmm. or uh, or there is something but there, there is some some something people pay attention to the lyrics they they there's something happening it's a very uh, you have very much that that community and that that coven vibe and for the rest of uh, you know for as far as i'm concerned for the rest of the weekend <laughs> yeah. just, just, just all of us can i can i just ask a question there before mm-hmm. I, you know i know we're running out of time but there's 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 actually two things just picking up on what maddie said there and uh I hate to keep mentioning Fields of Nephilim, but, you know, a big influence <laughs> on me. And um, there, I, I always remember an interview with Carl McCoy, the front man, who was talking about concerts being shamanic events. And uh, even if the audience doesn't fully realise it, um, uh, he is kind of invoking the other world as a shaman would in an in indigenous culture. Do you, do you ever, I mean, from what you've been just been talking about, would you go that step further and say that's a form of shamanism? I look at it like um so it's funny when we were talking about the the earth, air, fire and water dichotomy that we kind of created for the four of us. Um and it made me think Led Zeppelin basically did the same thing yes, back in the seventies, yeah. nothing new under the sun. And they always said the fifth element of spirit was the audience. Mm. And you know, uh, don't want to rip off old Jimmy Page, but <laughs> we totally are. But it totally works. And when you have an engaged audience, when you have something that makes people's hair stand up on their arms and they turn around, they put their beard down and go, hang on, what? Yes. Like something bigger happened. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's, it yeah. comes together. And that that's, paying attention, that drawing the audience in is, yeah. is something that I, I think, think yeah. that when we you... really try to do whenever we're playing. Because it does... Because, yeah, it's better that way. Like, the audience is an integral part of a band experience. Mm-hmm. Anyone who's done any level... My my dad's a uh, fairly well-known stand-up comedian, and he always says... He always used to say to me, like, look, your show is obviously a big part of it you have to be good you have to be great but the audience has to be great as well and there are some audiences that just if they're not there it doesn't matter how good you are it'll go nowhere and oh, that man, a truly good throw... performance is 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 both ways we've thrown 200 percent I mean... witchcraft into the yeah. scrubbiest little pub yes just for our own sake <laughs> we're just yeah, one old boy doing shots alone at the bar. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, I think, who will inevitably it... ask us afterwards, oh, do you dance naked in the forest then? In the full moon. <laughs> really? <laughs> really? Really? <laughs> business yes we do but that's none of your business no we don't no we don't no we don't come on come on we've we've got the 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 biggest full moon tonight tell me you're all doing something for it it's the hunter's moon it's the i will be be dancing naked around a fire on my own i don't know about you guys (laughs) (laughs) yeah Sat on the cat. <laughs> but looping, looping back round, I think that's why for us having us having fun on stage, that's why it's so important. And that was one of the things when we all came together. We're like, look, if the audience aren't with us, as long as we, as our unit ourselves, can perform t- to each other and have a great time together, then that magic is still there. If we are our own audience, then we still create the magic, even if it falls flat off the stage. And that somehow then amplifies that and means that we tend to, so far, I think we've had precious, precious few actually audiences that we went, oh, that didn't go well. Like most of the time, people are actually way more along for the ride than you'd expect. Even when the sound tech's been off. Yep. Oh, that's sound tech off. The second we come off stage, people go, oh, what was that song about? Oh, can I, can I... Yeah that one again oh i love that story yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, sometimes you really feel like something has like not gone well and then you're like oh 
oh, it must can't have been that bad then. <laughs> there was um, yeah. when we were at, uh, I think it was Three Wishes this time. Nem started her spiel before a song that we do called Offering, um, which is basically in about the the fairy folklore of leaving out an offering for the fae. Yeah. Um, and it's you know it's quite tongue in cheek, and it's basically you know like give give us give us uh, something or we'll swap your child for a frog sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. um, it, and it's very tongue in cheek. But before she started. Somebody came up with this tiny <laughs> little guy, <laughs> little Axel offering, <laughs> and was like, "Would you take this as an offering before you sing the song?" And we were like, "Yes." <laughs> so it's, it's these little amazing moments where, like, the audience have absolutely gone right. We are here for this. Yeah. We're committed yeah. to the bit, and it's great. And everyone's just along for the ride, and it's just and such think, a good time. To 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 loop the looping loop. Uh, you know, as a joke, sometimes we say, "Oh, we just created a cult, or whatever." It's it's obviously <laughs> it's obviously a joke, but it comes it comes back to this community, this this group, this coven, this energy, this vibe, and uh, virtually pretty much everything we talked about tonight is is that essential root kind of you know thing that we can't. We apparently just have twenty five different words for it. But yeah. it's what you feel. It, it's what you feel. It's what you want to follow, and what you want to share, and when you want to sing or scream or mm. cry or whatever. But mm. but you know, it's it's all come to that. And uh, and I think yes, we we are very privileged to not only to share it um, within our band and and with ourselves because we are having lots of fun doing doing that. And it's an incredible adventure. But sharing what we have to say, our music, and and yes, yeah, seeing seeing the, the reaction of people and having those people closing their eyes and singing, you know, lip syncing songs that they don't know yet or, yeah. or, mm. or yeah, dancing or rocking left, right and yeah. all that. This is, this is that magic as well. I think we've I said think... a couple of times like this, this podcast is that, that idea that people have forgotten the magic, that magic exists, mm. magic is there, magic is part of life and that what's really happened is that people have forgotten that and I feel like if Fayer's Folk has a has like a, a mandate or if Fayer's Folk has like an aim, I think part of our role as a band is to remind people that the magic is still there and it's within all of yeah. us and that we can, we're sort of reminding people that magic is here and you can choose to join in with it and we're inviting you to come there. along. Yeah. You don't It'll need be to change, and funny you don't need to sign and... up. Yeah. You're already there. That's it, yeah. that's it. I think you've hit the nail on the head. There is such a yearning right now, and, and it, it it seems to be filtering out all over the place for the two things of magic and community. And I think, you know, providing people with that space to have those mm. two things, you know, and a drink and a knees up at the same time, it's, it's just a definite winning combination, definitely. I know we're running out of time. I think we've probably run over, but who cares? <laughs> I, I, before we go, I want you to do some shameless promotion of where you're at, what you're doing, where people can find you, where people can buy the new album. Do the whole shebang for me. Cool. Who's on this? All right, Nam, I feel like you're normally the, <laughs> you're our promo, gone. We are Faye as Folk, that is F-A-E as Folk. You can find us on uh, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, all of those usual social media places. You can find our music under the band name Faye as Folk, F-A-E as Folk, uh, and particularly our album Coven, which is our most recent album, which is out on Spotify, iTunes Music, Amazon Music, all of those places. And you can uh, buy you it on on Bandcamp as well if you want to actually give us some money for it yes you can buy our album on Bandcamp we do love an offering we really love yeah. an offering on Bandcamp as well you can explore our t-shirts oh, yes. and merch merch yes. oh wait more we have more merch wait you can show more merch merch we have several t-shirts stickers all that sort of good stuff if you've already got the music and you've listened to the music on Spotify and you want to do, you want to buy something else, we have we have stuff. Uh, we are happy to pedal to mortals for mortal gold. So please uh, feel free to support us, and we look forward to meeting some new followers, perhaps uh, music. from perhaps from the Ghost Planet Network. We've heard that we might be over there, so uh, maybe oh, yeah, see some yeah. of you. Get over us on our booked as well. Media. If you if you want to see us play abroad, then help us make that happen. Oh. Yeah. Uh, we have a couple of gigs coming up if you pub. Yes. <laughs> and tell them we're looking 
One final promotion then is if you are in the UK and you are in the around the south of England, we will be playing at the Mesmerist Bar in Brighton on the I should have looked up the 20, date before I started uh, this. Twenty third October. And we have a Halloween event at the uh, Folklore Rooms with Witchcraft and Vagrancy Act, another fantastically on That's brand so spooky band. Great... So if you've got where, where, nothing where's else. Where's that last one? Where's that last one, Emily? Uh, the Folklore Rooms in Brighton uh, on Halloween. So and there is also on the 10th of November the uh, Spiritual Wiccan event. It's a market. Some yes. At England's Showground. In Haywards Heath, I believe. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's run by Divine Spiritual Events. Um, yeah. But all that information, it's all on our link tree, all on our socials. Go look if you are interested. Yes, we look forward to meeting some new followers and fans, hopefully. Right. I can I, I can only thank you all so so much for for oh, you've been thank an you absolute, for having us. absolute yeah, delight, absolute delight. And and I for one, I mean, neither myself or Neil have people on the podcast that we we don't have investment in, in on some some level. And um, definitely a joy to have you on. I I mean, there's things that I wanted to talk to you about that we haven't touched. So I think it's going to be one of those things, you know, we'll wait for things to calm down for you and probably around Christmas time, get you back and have a, have a, have a <laughs> chat about, about music. If you, if you wouldn't mind coming back, yeah. Neil, have you got any, any last words of wisdom or anything that you, you desperately need to ask before we, we sign off from this one? Do I, do I ever have words of wisdom? Yes. Yes, um, uh, actually, let's play out to Fields of the Nephilim now. <laughs> that, that, would, that would ruin it all. No, it's, I, 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 we really appreciate you coming along. This has been this has been quite a different podcast than what we usually do. You know, you, 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 usually it's very, it, you know, it's interesting and it's it can be fun, but it's it's kind of uh, there's a sort of academic side to it, and um, which people some people like, some people don't. And this has just been a blast. It's just, <laughs> uh, it's, it, it's, uh, I, I really hope viewers will um, plug into what you're saying, especially what all of you have been saying about magic and how that magic can incorporate into the everyday. And, uh, you know, the world we're in at the moment, we need magic. Yeah. We need it because um you know as the great carl young said as, as i've just told you we've lost it and it's causing us all sorts of problems oh so um I, th I think this is really it's been a really really great fun useful conversation with some nuggets of wisdom from all of you and thank you so much thank you very much oh, thank you for having thank us thank you for having us if i may say everyone please go and howl at the moon tonight or yeah. tomorrow it's gorgeous do it every day I can see it but from yeah, my window. Let's, yeah, let's all let's all get out there and get the campfires burning and uh, and have a yeah. few berries with that. Yes. So 100%. I'm hoping to catch up with you um, next year at some point at one of your gigs, and I'm I'm looking forward to that. So Thanks. to the viewers out there, mm -hmm. go and support this band. You will not be disappointed. Go and find them. Just tap, type in Fayez Folk um, into your search engine. If I can do it, anybody can do it because you all know what a technical potato I am with these things. <laughs> um, and it's the first link that comes up. So click on the link, check it out. You're not going to regret it. So whatever your taste, your genre taste, there is going to be something in there that's going to float your boat. So uh, go and check them out and, and support these beautiful people. Oh, thank, you. Oh, thank, thank you so you. much. Thank, thank you all very much. much for watching. Thank you, guys. Bye. Cheers.